In Jesus' name we do pray. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Today for our time together in the word of God, I want to preach from the sermon subject. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness? Uh, for all of us regular church attendees, we, we know that the phrase, can I get a witness, is one of those church sayings that trigger, if not to dictate, of the, a certain response from the congregation. Um, normally, we respond to, can I get a witness, amen, by either waving or even clapping of our hands, amen. Let me test my theory today. Um, if I say, praise the Lord, you say what? Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, that's right. If I say God is good, you say what? Oh, and if I close out a prayer and say, uh, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. So yeah, my theory is right. Amen. I'm on the right track. Amen. And so since can I get a witness? Uh, is one of those phrases uh, that we respond to out of a routine. Uh, not saying that's bad or good, we just that's how we do it, amen. But if that's the case for a little while, huh, can we really look at what is really expected of us, amen? When we when it is said to us, can I get a witness, amen? Can we take a look at what it is that the Lord is looking for today? Can I tell you that this glorious weekend, the women's ministry of the Goodwill Baptist Church, they have decided to use and to explore the theme. You don't know my testimony. Amen. And it got me to thank it, amen, that this was something that all the membership of the Goodwill Baptist Church, amen, could share in and learn more about. For we all should have a story to tell, amen. See, I believe this sermon, Can I Get a Witness, is, is going to do just that. Let me share this with you today. A testimony is the communicating of what you have seen, heard, or experienced for yourself. Amen. The one who communicates what they have seen, heard, or experienced for themselves can accurately be called a witness. Amen. And get this. What one testifies of or about, it is your witness. I just wanted to make that definition real clear. Amen. I want to help us, amen, to set up a, a firm foundation and to fully understand the magnitude of, of our testimonies and, uh, and uh, our being a witness. And, uh, see, God has called each of us, amen, um, to be a witness and, uh, before um, be, before in the beginning, uh, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, uh, um, God, uh, and his plural form, uh, which the Hebrews call Elohim, amen, uh, amen, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, they were already good, uh, and they did not need any validation of their goodness, uh, but God did uh, desire a witness. Come on, somebody walking with Pastor, amen. Hallelujah. See, as creation began to unfold, uh, and God made all that was made, uh, um, about on the sixth day, uh, God said, let us make a man in our own image uh, and our likeness. Uh, church, let me tell you today uh, that from the beginning, uh, Mankind, of mankind, you and I were called, amen, to have a testimony. Come on, somebody. Uh, we're called to bear witness, amen, to be a witness uh, uh, to the goodness of God uh, and not just the goodness of the creation. No, uh, to see everything that God had, had created before man uh, could have been a witness uh, to the creation, amen. Uh, the sun and the moon uh, do testify uh, and are witnesses for the goodness of God by the light they produce and the responsibilities to the functioning of the earth they carry out. They could have done that. The winds do testify of the unseen powers of God. All the mountains testify of God's strength. All the crashing seas bear witness of God's might. The flowers and the trees are witnesses to the beauty of creation. While the birds sing lovely songs and the insects buzz on church and click, amen, to keep a steady rhythm as dogs bark, lions roar, and elephants trumpet all to highlight the sounds of God's goodness in all the earth. I'm telling you, God could need 
Jesus to bear witness to this nation. But can I still tell you today that God wanted to be a witness to be able to testify more than that of what was created from the beginning. God wanted somebody, somebody, please, anybody, to be able to embrace, understand, and articulate the goodness that was not only of creation in the beginning, but it being created and recreated, being restored, being set free, being brought forth, even in our lives right now. Somebody say, the Lord is blessing me. The Lord is constantly blessing us over and over again. Somebody, God needed somebody to be a witness. Come on, y'all. Amen. Inanimate objects that were created could not do that. Creatures of the animal kingdom could not do that. Uh, but the living, uh, breathing soul could. One created in God's own image could. One that has felt and seen and heard of God's goodness for themselves. They could. Truth be told, God or no one else should have to ask can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. To the goodness of our God, we should be falling all over each other and ourselves to bear witness of Him. We have heard, can I tell you, that we should be a witness about God's goodness. And we have heard about who should be a witness. All those created in God's image, mankind. Well, you heard that, but there's still something else I need you to hear today. Man. And this is what I want you to know. Since God is looking for a witness, the Lord makes it possible that through the witness of his people, that God gets everything he desires from our witness for himself and all the others that are going to be blessed by your witness. You need to know somebody is going to be blessed by your testimony. But you got to be able to know how to give your testimony in order to be a witness. Do I dare say can I get a witness? Very familiar text about that we find a man that is possessed by demons and is in need of a mighty deliverance. For the purpose of this sermon, I don't need to go and dwell for long on the fact that this man was so possessed by demons that he lived amongst the tombs. I don't need to stay on the fact that this man was an uncontrollably strong person. No one or no thing could hold him. Not men or chains. He broke them all off. He was just too strong. He was a danger to all, including himself. He would cut himself with stones. And there was nothing anyone in this country could do for him. But church, don't forget, the Lord is looking for a witness. Come on. Amen. You got to understand this, uh, we uh, are in Mark 5, uh, but it was in Mark 4 uh, that Jesus told the disciples, uh, uh, around 435, uh, if you have your Bible, you can look right over there, uh, right. in Mark 435, uh, amen, Jesus said, let's go to the other side, amen, and then Jesus, amen, was going to the other side, Jesus and the disciples had to go through uh, a terrible storm, uh, a mighty wind, uh, but Jesus rebuked the storm, uh, and he Rebuked the wind and he called for peace in the midst of the storm. And we look, and through all that, he got to the other side. Mark 5 and 1 and 2 said, it lets us know that when they got to the other side of the sea in this country called the Galileans, immediately after leaving the ship, Jesus encountered this man that could not be bound, this man that was full of demons, this man that was in need of a deliverance. Was it a coincidence? No, not hardly. See, this should serve to let us know that the Lord will make sure Sure, uh, he I will meet right. you where you are. Uh, the Lord will uh, orchestrate circumstances and uh, yeah. 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 situations, amen, uh, yeah. for you and uh, for your good. Uh, just to be able to get to you, uh, just to be able to uh, minister to you, uh, so you uh, will have a testimony. Uh, yeah. Come on, somebody, yeah. can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. But this man a witness yet uh, 
know uh, well, watch what the Lord was about to do. Uh, look, let me tell you, uh, if you're going to be a witness, uh, and you are called to be a witness, uh, well, then the first thing I want to tell you today, uh, then you need to be qualified. Yes. Oh, somebody say it with me, qualified. <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me funny already, hey, man. This ain't no credit check, no. Uh, look, uh, look, uh, but that's what I said. You got to be qualified. Uh, see, don't get upset. All I mean is this: uh, that in order to be a witness, uh, you got to have something to witness about. Right, amen. Uh, see, uh, see, uh, you are not the witness the Lord is looking for uh, unless you have seen something, mm -hmm. uh, unless you have heard right. something, mm -hmm. uh, or unless you have experienced something in Him, of Him, or by Him. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, walk with the church. Uh, Acts 1 and 8 says this. Uh, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, Amen. And ye shall be witnesses. Yes, Amen. Right. And you shall have received power. Right. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, and you shall be witnesses. The Bible said unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, and look, uh, can I tell you in order to be qualified, uh, it is the touch uh, uh, that qualifies you. Uh, it is the that's move right. uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, that gives you and me the ability uh, and the reason to be a witness. Uh, it is the move of the Holy Spirit uh, in your life uh, and what makes it possible for us to have something uh, to witness about. Come on, uh, can I get a witness? Uh, yeah, we are qualified to witness through the Spirit of God yeah, for God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to get this church. See, uh, the man that who called himself Legion uh, was delivered from all those demons uh, because Jesus spoke a word uh, and the Spirit did move. Uh, can I say it again? Jesus said, "Come out," uh, and the uh, and the demons had to come out. Uh, Jesus gave a command, uh, and the Holy Spirit did move. Uh, this is what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, it acts upon the Word of God, uh, and when the Word of God has brought forth uh, a word unto you, uh, a direction unto you, uh, you can't deliver yourself. Uh, you can't fix yourself. Uh, you can't pick yourself up. Uh, but I know a man. on his behalf and set him free. Yeah. That made him qualified to be a witness. Yeah. Now look, uh, don't want nobody to get twisted this morning, this afternoon. Uh, uh, you Do you have to be delivered from demons to have a testimony or to be a witness? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, is it some great addiction uh, or some so-called great sin uh, or some great sickness uh, is the only thing that qualifies you uh, for a testimony or a witness? No, you see, you are qualified to be a witness when the Spirit of God has moved in your life to remove things. Yeah, that's good. But you're also qualified to be a witness because the Lord is good. You're also qualified to be a witness anytime the Lord has healed you. Anytime God has set you free, you're qualified with the Lord saved you. You're qualified when you receive the fullness of joy. You're qualified with you receive peace. Yeah. You're, you're qualified when God delivers you out of lack. You're qualified when you come out of poverty. You're qualified when you come out of darkness. You're qualified when you come in a marvelous light. You're qualified any time you're made whole. You're qualified any time you wake up with your health and strength. You got to make sure that through your witness uh, that God is glorified. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the uh, verses 15 and 16. Uh, today is how you make sure uh, the Lord is glorified through your witness. Uh, see, people, uh, the people of that country, uh, they came to see Jesus. 
They heard about uh, what Jesus did for the man possessed of demons. Uh, and they saw a man clothed and in his right mind. Right. They saw a change in him. For until now, his deliverance, until his deliverance, this man ran around naked and out of his mind. See, it was not just the words of this man that this man could speak that made his witness awesome. It was not just how captivating and unusual his testimony was that made him worth hearing and glorify the Lord. It was none of that, but it was this. It was the unmistakable change. Right. Yes. Unmistakable, undeniable change in his life in this man that calls the Lord to be glorified. Amen. Church, you got to get this. Uh, what good would it do uh, um, for the kingdom of God? Uh, if this man were delivered or claimed deliverance, but he was still sitting in the cemetery, what good would it have done God uh, if he was still running around naked? Uh, what good would it have done God uh, if he still didn't have his mind? Uh, no self-control over himself. Uh, mutilating himself and doing harm to everybody. Uh, what good would it have done the kingdom? Uh, how would God have been glorified uh, if there had not been a change? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, uh, Wherefore come out from among them uh, and be ye separate. Uh, Say the Lord, and touch not that unclean thing, and I will receive you. Look, this scripture is not is not an advertisement for a members only club. No, it's not saying that. It's not saying that you gotta act better than anybody else, or that you gotta act sadistic, that you need to act and not socialize with anybody. But what it is saying is that there must be a distinction between them that have been delivered and them that have. A witness, uh, those that are walking in the Lord, uh, and those that are still caught up uh, in darkness. Amen. Uh, you ought to be able to tell the difference. Uh, oh, you may find yourself every now and then uh, to be a sheep uh, amongst a whole, a whole flock of goats, uh, but don't you start acting like a goat. Uh, that's so you will. Because how can the Lord be glorified unless your witness line up with the word? Come on, the right here trying to test the lie. Amen. They testifying about God's goodness. They they doing something else. You can tell because what they say don't match the fruit of their life. The days of our lives, but we as Christians need to watch the fruit of our lives. Because what our fruit is is what the tree is. I got a pear tree in my yard. Amen. I can't. There you go. Amen. I can't call that tree an apple tree. Because if I call it an apple tree all day long, it's still bearing pears. Amen. That's all I'm saying. You can't call yourself a witness for God if you're still working for the devil. Amen. That's all I'm saying. In order for God to be glorified, you must change. And let me say this. There are some strongholds that God will deliver us from that we must grow and get stronger to be able to go back into that very thing we came out of. You see, sometimes we get delivered and we are changed. But we want to go right back and minister to what we came out of and we ain't strong enough. We ain't got there yet. I'm just giving you some pastoral wisdom. If you're a drunk, stay on the bar. Amen. That's all I'm saying. If you're a crackhead and God will you, stop messing with the pipe. Amen. Amen. That's all I'm saying. That's the, if you like me, if you're a chocolate cookie fiend, amen, stay on, stay on the bakery aisle. That's all I'm saying. If you can't handle it. If you can't handle it, let somebody else. There might be some folk that in need what you got, but you ain't ready to give it to them yet. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Have to be a witness. Uh, see, God needs to be glorified. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you this: uh, everyone does not want to give God the glory. Can I tell you, uh, for the Lord to be glorified, uh, that is given the honor that is His, uh, that is due Him. Uh, it does not take the approval of man uh, or the enemy, uh, but they will have to give in uh, to the undeniability that He is the power of God. How many of y'all know uh, that there is power uh, in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. And if I just that, that name Hallelujah. of Jesus, that every knee shall bow. Uh, and every tongue confess uh, that Jesus is Hallelujah. Lord. Uh, that's every knee. Uh, 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 now, whether 
God if you accept him or not, uh, uh, you will know uh, and admit uh, that Jesus is Lord Jesus. and worth all the honor. Uh, see, it is in this chapter. Uh, when Jesus cast out the demons, uh, he allowed them to possess a herd of pigs. Uh, and those 2,000 or so pigs uh, possessed by the very same demons uh, that were in the man uh, ran over a cliff uh, and they were destroyed. Uh, now in verse 16, uh, those uh, that kept the pigs uh, are telling the owners of the pigs uh, what has transpired. Uh, and while they cannot deny the power of Jesus, uh, um, they prefer not to give to God the glory. Amen. Everybody don't want I know to see God glorified. Right. Church, let me tell you, so you know, <clears throat> a good witness ought to be able to convince you that the Lord is worthy of all the praise, yes. honor, and glory. Yes. But a good witness cannot make you comply with the fact that God is good and you should glorify his name. Uh, see, that's up to the individual. Yeah. See, some folk get hurt, amen. Uh, they get hurt when they get in their witness, amen. Uh, they qualify and they make sure God is glorified. But if they, they think it's up to them to make sure the whole world is saved, it ain't up to you. Uh, you ain't got to have no hell, amen. It ain't up to you. Uh, all you are is a witness, amen. Uh, you saw something, you heard something, you experienced something. You wasn't the one doing it. You just know about it firsthand. Uh, it ain't up to you, but it's up to God. You got to understand this, that your witness, amen, is a vehicle for somebody else to come unto Jesus. But if they don't, if they don't want to ride in your car, amen, beat the horn as they see you later, amen. Because you can't be destroyed. You, you can be destroyed because your witness is not accepted. It ain't your witness that need to be accepted. It's the witness of God that needs to be accepted. Come on, come on, somebody. You got to get there. Some folks get that testimony one time, and when folks don't receive it, they won't give it no more. And as blessed as it is, nobody's getting it because someone, somebody, turned a deaf ear to it. But how many of you know that it's somebody? Yeah. It's somebody. Yeah. And you can be saved. Look, let me tell you this. Amen. The Lord, the Lord is allowing our testimony to go on. Because uh, there is one day the folk that don't receive the testimony, the witness of God, uh, they're going to find themselves uh, unable to stand uh, in the presence of God on the judgment day. Uh, see, I'm trying to do this as nice as I can, but, but, but there is a time when uh, you, uh, when either you will be uh, eligible to be in the presence of God, uh, and if you're not eligible, then you will be cast into outer darkness. Uh, that's what the word said. Uh, that's another name for hell. Uh, but by, by, by refusing to give God the glory and having the nerve to actually beg Jesus like these people did to leave their country. These people were not denying God his glory, but denying themselves an opportunity uh, to be a witness and to be uh, be witness to uh, and to be saved unto God. Come on, somebody. Your witness, uh, your, people, your witness is going to be glorifying to God that it should be designed to get somebody else saved. Hallelujah. But they got to want it. Somebody say they got to want it. The last thing I'll tell you, and I'm getting ready to go, uh, if you're going to be a witness, amen, you still have to seek people, no matter how you've been rejected, who will be and want to be edified by your witness. Come on, that's three things. That's, that's to be qualified and to make sure God is glorified and then people need to be edified. Come on. See, that to edify as it is used in the Bible, it means to build up. It means to make able. It means to strengthen. It means to, to restore. It means to encourage. Church, let me tell you, God has an audience for you. There are people out there that is waiting on your witness. Uh, folks uh, that can identify with you. Folks that will identify with you. Folks that will only only you can reach. Uh, folks that are waiting on your testimony. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, Amen. See, there are folks out there uh, that the only thing between them uh, and coming to Jesus is you yep. showing up uh, and being a witness. Come on, you got to know that. Uh, some of us, come on. Uh, some of us come in contact uh, with the unsaved and the unchurched all the time. Uh, uh, about every day. And it's easy to say that those are the ones uh, that are in need of our witness. Uh, but what about those that we come into contact with uh, that have a knowledge of God uh, that may even uh, be 
church folks uh, when they are not receiving uh, a word of truth uh, from where they attend. Uh, they are not able uh, to discern uh, and to receive the gospel message, uh, the good news, uh, the glad tidings of great joy uh, about our glorious Savior. Uh, and without that truth, can I tell you, those people that you think uh, don't need God because they look fine, they dress fine, they talk fine, they don't split in finishes, subject and verb agree, amen. Don't use double negatives. You think that they don't need God, but they need your witness. Amen. Can I take a witness? You are here sitting under an unadulterated word of God. A word of God that come, that come cut like a two-edged sword. A word of God that come not just walking down the aisle, but it'll come stomping through the pew. It might catch a corn every now and then. You might have to say ouch before you say amen. And you know that you're in a, you're in a place where the word of God is being witnessed. Somebody needs that witness. And you know that you are getting every day. And I ask you right now. Do me this one favor. Don't you ever take a soul for granted. I ain't saying you attack nobody with your witness, but you know what you need to do? Let your little light shine. Yeah. 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 To be a witness, y'all. Look, y'all. Jesus was not trying to hang around her where he was not wanted. Her. They told him that right. he needed to get up out of here. But can I tell you, Jesus was packing up, getting ready to go. Her. Had his boat out, amen. Somebody had the motor running and the sails up. But he was about ready to get up out of here. But just because Jesus was willing to go ahead and go and leave for where he was not wanted, that was not that did not mean that the glory of God was about to leave that place because the glory was going to stay there as long as there was a witness. Come on, somebody. Amen. When Jesus was getting back into his ship to leave, the man that was delivered from the demons began to beg Jesus, can I go, can I go, can I go, go, go? But Jesus said, no, and I know, and I know, no, no. Jesus said, you can't go with me, but go back to your friends and witness to them and share with them the goodness that you have received. Share with them the love. Share with them the compassion that was freely given unto you. In other words, Jesus said, can I hear the witness? Jesus said, there are some folks that are in this place that you will need to be all that you will need to reach. Can I get a witness? Just because you are willing to witness, they shall be saved. Can I get a witness? Jesus said, go and do what I delivered you to do. Jesus said, can I get a witness? And the Bible said that the man departed and he began to publish the good things that the Lord had done. Can I tell you what that means? That man that was once out of his mind, right around naked, he wrote a book. That man that was once running around out of his mind, he began to give lecture tours. That man that was once out of his mind, he began to tell of the goodness of the Lord. That man, he stayed. You know why he stayed? Because Jesus said, Can I a witness. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but how many of you, how many of you want to be, want to be a witness? Hallelujah. Anybody here? Anybody over there? Anybody over there? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to 
I'll take you. 